Hello everybody, this is Gail, and I just wanted to show you what I'm going to do with the leftover clay from doing my Hearts for Heroes. And I always tell you, never throw away your scraps. So I thought I would show you why. Uh, these are the scraps. These are the ones that have already been uh, blended, or not blended, but you know they've been made into camouflage and then I've got some of the leftover clay that I had left over from when I made the uh, the camouflage and it was just sitting here on my table so I'm thinking okay what can I do so I thought maybe it was time to show something else to do with scrap clay so I've got this here I'm going to just kind of break some of these solid pieces up a little bit not that it really matters, that's just what I feel like doing right now. And just do what feels good to you. Um, I know you feel like some of you may not even know enough about what you're doing to know what feels good, but until you try it, you just don't know. But I'm going to just break up, especially these ecru pieces, just because I don't want a lot of that in one place. And I've got some gold clay here that was just left over from another project. It's not very much, but I'm going to just break that up a little bit. So it'll have a little bit of shine. And no, I'm not going to make another cane. This is not going to be a cane. This is going to be something even neater than a cane. So I'm going to just consolidate all this together and I'm going to get my roller and just roll it out let's see there. get my little kidney to turn it and just flatten it out as much as you can. Just to get it together. You don't have to make it flat, flat, but just enough to get it to stick together. And then what I would do, and you can do whatever you want, I'd like to roll this into a little bit of a ball, not a ball, but like a log. So I'm going to just fold it over a few times and every time I fold it I'm going to press to make sure I get the air out. And then push in. If you see paint, I've been painting today. I've been dabbling in mixed media and I think I might have told you I'm taking a, or it's not really a class, but there's cat hand is the YouTube name and she is showing people like me how to do mixed media one method at a time and it's called uh, media morsels or mixed media morsels I'm not sure which it is but anyway I've been doing that and today I was using purple paint but anyway when you get it into a log especially since it's fairly condition because you haven't been that long since you used it start twisting it and then just roll it again you might want to fold it one time and roll it back into a log close up your seams I hope this is going to turn out as neat as it does on other things. I've never done it with a patterns quite so intricate, not intricate, but as busy as the camouflage. But twist it again. And when you get to where you've got some pretty neat looking stripes, can you see all those stripes? Then you can start thinking, actually what I'm going to do is try to match the ends a little bit so I don't lose any volume on the ends and then I'm going to take my roller and I'm going to start to flatten it out. I'll go that way 
but mostly I'm going to go this way across the stripes. see I think I'm going to run it through my pasta machine um, I think I'll roll it through the pasta machine on number one but I'll roll it through this way so that the stripes don't get messed up <laughs> How neat does that look? So, there's a few little scraggly pieces of clay on top. I'm just going to get rid of that. Now, we can do two things. We might go even a little, a little thinner. Don't fold it. Keep it like this. And you might want to stretch it more into a rectangle. Clay is very forgiving. So it will let you do this. And I'm going to roll it through on a number three. And that's going to give us lots to work with. So you're going to need room now to cut. And you're going to need room to place your clay after you've cut it. So actually what I think I'll do, since this is a pretty good sized piece of clay, I'm going to clean my blade for one. Looks like I didn't clean it after the last time I used it. So another thing you always need to do when you are working with your blade is always clean it. But I'm going to maybe cut this in half and set half aside. Now, another thing, you might want to look, see on this side of the clay, how you've got this big ecru place there, but on this side you don't. So make sure you're using the prettiest side of your clay, and again, this side is the prettiest side. So what I'm going to do, let me find a place I can put this so it's out of the way and yet won't get messed up. All right, so you look how thick your clay is, and it is a, a number three. If you use the uh, playing card method of measuring, and that might be a good tip for people that don't have a pasta machine. Uh, the people, because pasta machines are, no two are alike. My atlas might have a number one that's one thickness but somebody else's atlas on a number one might be a little bit just a little bit different so since and in other machines like my atlas the number zero is the thickest and the number nine is the thinnest setting but there are machines out there where number six and maybe they go from one to six and six is the thickest and one is the um, thinnest so you don't know uh, when you're doing tutorials, how to explain to someone the second thickest or the third thickest or the fourth thickest or the thinnest, and you know, it makes it hard. So they came up with what they call a, a playing card method of measuring. And a lot of instructors are using that now. And on my machine, what you do is you take your machine and you put it on, like on mine, on the number zero, and you take a plain deck of playing cards. And you see how many cards it takes to go through the space between the rollers on your machine. Now, in my case, the number zero is nine playing cards thick. Ironically, the number one is also nine playing cards thick, so there's very little difference between the zero and the one. My number two is seven playing cards thick. And my number three, which I've got here, is five playing cards thick. And just for sake of, of uh, being able to show it on the video, I'm going to keep it at the number three. But if you don't have a pasta machine and someone says to roll something to a uh, number 
one, which I'm going to say is nine cards thick. You can take a deck of playing cards, make take a stack of nine cards, make actually make two stacks of nine cards, and tape them together, and put one, if you can imagine that, let me do it this way. If you can imagine that these are the two decks of cards, you put your clay in the middle, and then you just roll over it with your roller, and you would be able to roll to nine playing cards thick, which is the number one. So that might help somebody um, if that doesn't have a pasta machine. But let me show you what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to cut this just about as wide as it is thick. And just make a slice and move it over. And then I'm going to make another slice about the same size. And when I move it over, I'm not going to put it directly because the patterns would match up. But if I offset it just a little bit, and let me zoom in on that so you can hopefully you can see. Let me. I lost it. I don't know if that's going to... It's not. I'm not going to get it to focus. But there you go. Maybe you can see there. See how if I lay it right here, which is the way it was done, everything, the pattern still matches up. But I'm going to offset it just a little bit. And then unstick it from my blade. And just make sure it's butted up against here. And make sure it stays straight. A way to straighten it, if you pull up one end and just kind of give it a little bit of a pull, it'll straighten out. Alright, so let me try another one. Try to keep it the same width as all the others. And just go down a little bit more. Can you see that? Hopefully you can. And just butt it up against it. And you just keep going like that. And what you're doing is making a little bit of a bar jello. And let me do this one. I'm not going to do the whole... the whole thing for you. Whoops. If it comes loose from your blade, like mine just did, you can pick it up. Just be sure that you keep it in the same orientation as the others. There. And what you're doing is you're just shifting the design just enough to give it a little bit of interest, I guess you could call it. Let me see. So what I'm going to do, I've gone one, two, three, four, five, six down. And just make sure they're stuck together. The next one I'm going to start moving back up. So instead of going down, I'm going to come back up a little bit. And then we'll do the same number coming up. And when you get this done, you can do as many, you can do any design you want. Matter of fact, I have a book that I found in a thrift shop years ago when I went to Shrinemont one year. There's a little country town not too far away. And one of the other 
participants and I just needed to get away for a while. So we went over to this little town and went into the thrift shop. And I found this book on Bargello. And it's a fabulous book. But it shows different designs. Now these these colors, since they're all natural colors from the like the khaki and the blue, or not blue, green and brown and things like that, it's not going to be quite as dramatic. But you can get some really beautiful effects with this. Can you see that? How it's forming uh, almost like a V. And you can just keep going. I think now that I've come up, I'm going to start going back down again. And you just need to be consistent in what you're doing. And just... What do they call things like this? Idiot's Delight? This is something you can do, if, well, I say while you're watching television, but you've got to watch this, so I don't guess you, if you're listening to television or listening to music, this is a good thing to do. Because you don't have to pay, only attention you have to put, pay is how thick you're slicing it and where you're putting it after you sliced it. But imagine this with different shades of blue or pinks and purples or greens and yellows. You can just do so many different. And of course, like I said, these are pretty neutral colors because they were for the Hearts for Heroes. And I think I will one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just going to keep going. Um, you're welcome to fast forward, or maybe I'll fast forward the tape. I've never done that. And it, actually, it kind of irritates me when other people do it, because I like to see what they're doing. But this isn't going to be a long tape. So just keep slicing. And see, this is only half of my... Um, my blend, I guess you could call it. I've still got the other half, this here, sitting here, so I can make this a pretty big sheet. But what some people do is they will do different designs, and then they'll... Well, I'm talking, and I'm losing track of where I'm putting my clay. They'll do different designs, and use a, they'll cut shapes out of it, Actually, what I could do is I could make more hearts for heroes. I could take this, and I don't think I'll go anymore. I think you get, whoops, I went down instead of up. Let me see if I can get that apart. And See, you can't talk and do this at the same time. Hear Johnny Cash in the other room. It must be a movie. Not that I don't like Johnny Cash, but I don't listen to his music. Okay, now I can put it back where it belongs, going up. There. The Ring of Fire. Excuse me. Can't help myself. Anyway, so you get the idea. I can just keep going and keep going and keep going and have this nice pattern. And then I can take another piece of scrap clay, or if I wanted to use this, the other half of this, I could scoop this. Well, first you want to roll it very lightly with a roller this way because you don't want to mess up your V pattern. But just kind of get them so they stick together good.
there. But you could take this and put it on another piece of clay, a thin piece of scrap clay. I guess I need to come back out a little bit. Put it on a thin piece of scrap clay so it'll be a little bit thicker. And then you can take this, if you want, and make more hearts. Just find a place that looks interesting to you and cut more hearts. So I can make lots and lots of hearts, except I did... Um, I, I used all of my, I keep wanting to call them spinners, but they're not spinners, they are swivels. But uh, I need to go get some more, but they're pretty cheap at Walmart. I think it's $1.99 for 12 of them, and I, I got two packages and I used them all, so I made 24 hearts. But anyway, this is just something else you can do. You can use this as a veneer for a bracelet. Um, there's so many things you can do with this. Um, you could cut it out in a shape. Some people, and I don't think I have any handy here, but there are the glass um, nail files have a nice rounded end to them, and some people make these even. They cut make the clay even thinner and cut smaller sections. It's just easier for me. Now I see where I still messed up here. I never did get that right. But um, they use smaller pieces so it takes a lot longer but it really looks intricate and it's, it really makes a nice finish. You can make bracelet tiles. You can do all kinds of things with this. So this is just something else that you can do with your scrap clay. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it and will use what you learned. I'd love to see it. If you do something like this in whatever colors you choose, I'd love to see it. You can either post a picture on my Facebook page to show me what, what you're doing. And, um, you know, or you, I don't know, do a video. Do like I did. Do, do a video. Whatever you choose to do, I'd love to see your designs. So take care. Have a good day, and I'll be back soon. Bye.